folks who call us and they're like, well, I'm trying to do this on a webinar, it's just not working. I'm like, well, your call to action might be wrong. Or you, ha you're, yes, you're doing the webinars, but your attendance rate really, really sucks. You know, or your replay sequence isn't working the way it is expected to. Automated webinars are incredible sales tools. There was a time when we had a webinar uh, that was going like gangbusters and we used affiliates to promote this webinar as many people who promote products on webinars do. And we ran this webinar so many times that my wife, or she, she was my fiance at the time, but she, she started calling herself a webinar widow. Um, because every night at eight or, eight or 9 p.m. Eastern, three, four nights a week, I was running this live webinar. And at the time, automated webinars, they, they weren't out yet. The systems, the platforms that were, they didn't work real well. You know, they were a little bit buggy. They didn't feel like a webinar. It just kind of felt like a video that was playing on a page. And the conversion kind of sucked on them. So I was like, well, why don't we just, you know, run them live? We'll do, do it while we can and, and that'll be that. So since then, automated webinars have been incredible sales tools. They have made massive impacts on our clients. Um, and there are some strategies to automated webinars that uh, I wanna share with you in this video that I think will really, really help um, maximize your conversions. So the first is um, you wanna make sure that the automated webinar starts frequently. So we've done so many different automated webinar tests, everything from you know uh, letting somebody pick a couple times, like 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, and 10 a.m. Eastern, or whatever. Um, what we have found is the more options you give someone, the, the less likely they are to take any of them. You know, it's very much kind of the sales psychology rule. But if you give somebody one option as to the time that they can pick, then most likely they're going to sign up, even if they understand that, you know, they will get the replay afterwards. And the time that we pick is generally starting every 15 minutes. So right now, you know, right now is uh, 1245. So there was a webinar that started this minute at 1245. Somebody who comes to the page right now, the next webinar will start in 15 minutes. So it'll start at one. That way there's always a webinar waiting in queue, waiting for them to get onto. You can schedule it so that your webinar starts at you know 3 p.m. Eastern every day. And that's fine. Um, I would just make sure to test it. Generally when a webinar starts every 15 minutes, the attendance rate is about 55%. If you schedule it, you know, into the future, like later this afternoon or tomorrow or in a, in a couple days, then attendance will drop to about 30%, very similar to a live webinar. A live webinar attendance is right at 30, 35%, unless you have a really, really active list or you take steps to actively engage those folks leading up to the webinar. So they sign up for a webinar and then you send, maybe you send a video then you send another video the next day, then they attend the webinar and that is your sequence. Then oftentimes those attendance rates will be up just because you're engaging them differently uh, in, you know, throughout in, in the next couple days before the webinar actually starts. So that's webinar tip number one. Automated webinar tip number two is to use the right call to action. So, so many of our clients sell very expensive stuff, you know, so whether it's a mastermind or a consulting package or a coaching package or whatever. So it's stuff that is above like two, three thousand dollars. So oftentimes where they kind of botch the automated webinars is that they aren't taking another an extra step. The automated webinar is to a generate registrations from paid traffic and from your list. So it's a great for signing up leads. B, the automated webinar is for bonding with that audience, for giving them content, helping them with a couple ahas, you know, giving them some material that they can sink their teeth into and implement, you know, in their life, in their business, whatever. 
Um, and then C is to ultimately convert them. So that conversion, that CTA, the call to action, should drop around minute 45, minute 50. So you have a, a very brief intro section, it might be 10 minutes. Then you move into some, some, some questions just to kind of get the audience thinking, engage the audience. Then you move into content. So you're delivering 20, 30 minutes worth of content before you get to the call to action, which is the thing that you wanna sell. So that call to action, if it is a course that is below $2,000, then you can typically just link right to a sales page, um, either a sales page or an order form and get the conversion that way. If you are selling something more expensive or more complicated, so something that isn't necessarily just, you know, uh, click the button below, fill in your credit card information and you'll get access immediately after you purchase. If it's more complex than that, then you really need to have them sign up for a sales call. So this sales call can be a strategy session. A lot of people in like the space use the term strategy session. It can be a consultative sales call. It can be a demo. It can be uh, an action plan, which we started using a long, long, long time ago. You know, but basically that, that action plan, that sales call, that strategy session is designed to get them on the phone where they're talking and, and you're able to help them with things in their life or in their business. And then if it makes sense, then you make the offer. So if your offer, if the product you're, or service you're selling is above $2,000 or is complicated, it's a complex offer, then you want to get them on a sales call. And then if it makes sense, you pitch them on the sales call. So that's really one of the biggest kind of challenges we've seen um, with a lot of uh, potential clients or you know folks who call us and they're like, well, I'm trying to do this on a webinar, it's just not working. I'm like, well, your call to action might be wrong. Or, you ha you're, yes, you're doing the webinars, but your attendance rate really, really sucks. You know, or your replay sequence isn't working the way it is expected to. And that's tip number three. You wanna make sure to have the webinar replay sequence go out immediately after the, not immediately, but at least four hours after the webinar, and you wanna have six emails in that webinar replay sequence. The first two emails going out usually four hours after the webinar and then um, the next day. Those two emails are gonna promote the webinar replay. You wanna link them to the on-demand version of the webinar replay. Then email three links to both the webinar replay and the offer. You wanna make sure to have both links in that third email. Then emails four, five, and six promote the offer exclusively. So we know, I mean, you know, if they miss a couple of emails, then the on-demand webinar replay link is sitting in their email somewhere, you know, so they can go back and look for it. I mean, how often do you and I go, go searching for emails in our, in our inbox? They know how to find it. So email four, five, and six, promote the offer, and then you shut down the offer. Oftentimes you shut down the offer by taking away a bonus or by raising the price. You, there's some, some sort of fear of loss element there. You wanna do something to increase the fear of loss, um, which creates buyer urgency. You don't wanna just fabricate it, you know, but, but you wanna do something around that webinar, the close of the webinar replay that will give somebody incentive to purchase. So in terms of automated webinars, they were famously, um, that's those three tips I would suggest implementing as quickly as possible. So the first is uh, automated webinar replay starts often up to every 15 minutes. The second is make sure you have the right call to action in the webinar. And the third is make sure your webinar replay sequence, even for an automated webinar, is at least six emails long. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, comment. And if you'd like to jump on the phone with me and my team about your webinar, your automated webinar, or creating a webinar for your offer, then click the button below this video or somewhere on this page. Schedule an action plan call with us and I'll talk to you soon. Thanks.